Good morning, my name is Reverend Annie Gordon. I will be your speaker for today. Uh, I will be speaking from the book of Ephesians, the fourth, the fourth chapter, verses one through six. Uh, you can stand for the reading of the word if you would like. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse one through six. Uh -huh. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vacation wherewith ye are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for edification of my soul. Amen. My Heavenly Father, we come right now to tell you thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for allowing me to stand here and speak another word, my Heavenly Father, for your glory. As you right now, this created me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. And just fill me with your Holy Spirit, my Heavenly Father, and touch right now, my Heavenly Father, and let someone receive. The word of God. We ask you right now, Lord, to bless us. And as I go forward, uh, we would like to invite you to come and visit us, 6 and 758 South Wabash Avenue. Our service starts at 1130. Our pastor is Reverend Wilkes. We would love to have you. Service starts at 1130. I would love to see your face. So this morning, I will be talking about let's walk in unity. And there's been a lot said about a lot of things that is on my mind that I want to say, but I know it might touch somebody in the wrong way, but I have gotten old enough and gray-headed enough to feel that the Lord has put me here this long for a reason. All right. All right. So I want us to be, that we should just be able to walk in unity and help each other. I remember reading in Jeremiah, I don't forget what chapter, maybe. God told Jeremiah that I want you to pluck up and replant. Mm -hmm. And he wanted him to pluck up Israel and replant another nation and there's been a lot of talk about some people's coming to Chicago and that you know is we are all one body and I think that uh, the reason a lot of people are talking is because they're not citizen but uh I remember back in the 60s, I'm that old. All right. <laughs> back in the 60s when uh, a lot of people was coming from the South. And there's another race was saying the same thing that we say about that, you know. And he told Jeremiah, you got to pluck up some folks sometime and replant. And they are saying now that. You're not, they're not doing anything for the citizen here. I even heard that this morning. Mm -hmm. But they did do something for us. To be, we had the projects. And a lot of people don't think they was good, but there was a place to stay there you go. Mm. until you could save money and get out. There was a place to stay. And so now these people need help. One body. The Holy Spirit was sent. Jesus said, I'm going away, and I'm going to send you another comforter. Yeah, yeah. He didn't 
said I'm going to send a, another conference for, for Chicago. On, it's boys. for the whole world. Come on, yeah. boys. And since we, the, the Holy Spirit for the whole world, we're supposed to love each other. Some kind of way, you know, we may not approve of what everybody do or how everybody live, but we're supposed to love each other. Right. And, and, and treat people with respect. You know, we're supposed to learn how to love because you don't know when you're going to need some help. You don't That's know it. when you're going to need some help. Come on, you don't know Come on. every neighborhood that they take people. Somebody got something to say. Nah. I don't yeah. care what color it is. They got something to say. Come on, man. Like I said, I'm gray-headed enough to say what I'm going to say. All right. Come on with it. <laughs> but let me see. Anyway. Christian life is not based on ignorance, hmm. but the knowledge and the better we understand the Bible, the easier it is to obey. Come on, Bible duties. It doesn't make a difference what you believe because what you believe determines how you behave. Hmm. God is love, and he urges us to love and show us and show his glory. For in Deuteronomy 6, chapter 13, verse, in the Old Testament, God told the Jews, if you obey me, I bless you. But in the New Testament, he says, I have already blessed you. Now, in response to my love and grace, I want you to obey me and love me. That's what the New Testament said. Jesus had already blessed you. I've already blessed you. So I want, but I, in response to that, I want you to love me. And God has reconciled the Jew and the Gentiles to himself in Jesus Christ. That was the secret Paul had. Paul was called to be an apostle to the uh, Gentiles. And he said, I got a secret to tell you all. That you, the Gentiles, and the Jews are the same if they believe. God had reconciled them together. One is no better than the other. <laughs> That is what Paul's message was to the Gentiles. And sometimes you got to be careful, too. I want to talk about how you treat people. Because in the, about the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, you read about Paul, you know, on the Damascus Road and how he was going to uh, get Christians and put them in jail and beat them and all that stuff. You got to be careful how you treat people because... Everything that happened to Paul, they that Paul was doing to these people, they did it to Paul. Come on. You know, you got to be careful how you treat people. That's right, because it might come back on you. Wow. And they put him in jail. They beat him and all that. Everything Paul had done came back on him, but he was God. Jesus told him to go and be an apostle to the Gentiles. How do we walk in unity? We must have grace of unity. Humanity means putting Christ first. Other people sucking and put yourself last. Mm. Sometimes it's hard to do. God does not condemn you when you accept yourself and your gift. You know, uh, when you say you have a gift and in, 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 uh, everything, you know, he don't condemn you for having a gift. He has given people gifts. A gift is something that you like doing. But a talent is something you like doing. But a gift is when you edify the church, when you're upbuilding the church. And stuff like that. He don't condemn you when you accept yourself and your gift. He just not want you to think more highly of yourself you when go. you have this gift. You know, when you get a gift, you think you are better than 
anybody else, you know. That's a gift you have that you like doing. But when you, God has given you this spiritual gift. He wants you to edify the church, bless the church, yes. you know. And meekness is not weakness. Come on, God. It's Hello. power oh. under control. All right. yes. All right. Moses was a meekness man. He had power. But he had it under control except one or two times. <laughs> yeah. Jesus was a meekness man. He had power, but he had it under control. Sometimes if you're a meekness person, that you have to step out sometime and let people know that you just can't run over me today. You know, you might have did it yesterday. <laughs> we must have peace. The reason for war on the outside is because we have war in the inside. Mm. We Come got on, it going. Come on, preacher. Worried. You know, talking about each other. You know, something is going on with your mind, with your brain. You got war going on on the inside. So whatever is going on in the inside is going to show on the outside. Yes, it is. <clears throat> the believers who know of one body walk in the spirit and look for the Lord. You know, when Jesus left, he said, I'm sending you another comforter. He sent it for the whole world. And he sent it for the whole world. You might, we all together in a whole world, but you also can be together locally. Based together like we in Chicago, we always can be connected. But we are connected in the whole in the whole world through the Holy Spirit. How we um, live together in unity? One faith, one baptism, mm -hmm. <clears throat> one Father. God is over all the world. He's working through all of us, and we should be able to work together in unity. The Lord's Prayer, when we say the Lord's Prayer, it says you open up with our Father. Mm -hmm. He's the Father of everybody. Yes, he is. Not just one or two persons. Yeah. You don't say my Father when you start praying. Mm -hmm. You said our Father. Yes, he does. Because he's the Father of everybody. That's right. That's right. God has given each believer at least one spiritual gift. Some people know how to sing. That's not me. <laughs> yes, but God has given me. You might be a person that like to draw people to church, invite people to church. You might be a person that likes to go out and testify about Jesus Christ. God has given each person at least one gift. And it's up to us to use that gift. For the glorifying and edifying of the church, the building up the church. Whatever it is that you know how to do, that God has given to you to do. You should be willing and able to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and then you ought to train somebody else. Mm -hmm. The younger generation. Come on, come on. Because when you look around, you see that the older generation, are getting older, has gotten older. Right. And you need the younger generation to come. Because if you don't train up somebody, the church is going to die. And we need people to keep things going. And that's what should be our gift, to build up the church. Walk in unity. And whatever it is you know how to do, let him use you for his glory. Because mm. Jesus said that when he, before he left, he said, Father, I've given them all that you had given me. I've taught them and told them whatever you want me to give. And it's up to us to receive it and help someone else. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.